Hi everyone, so today in this uh, seventh installment of my Remaking Hollow Knight series, we're going to take a look at how we can create a swell attack, and then we're going to create, uh, in future video, we're going to also create a pogo attack that you can uh, attack, uh, where you can attack down and have a little bit of momentum, those kind of things. Uh, the swell attack is very important in, uh, in Hollow Knight because that's one of the main, uh, main uh, way to uh, attack enemies in the game, so that's something that we're going to spend a little bit of time on because it's important. I'm putting a lot of effort into making that series little by little, sorry if, if it takes me a little bit of time, but I try to do something that is really good. Uh, and so if you like it, but please like and subscribe. You can also go and wishlist my game Lone Night on Steam, and you can check my course uh, in the description of this uh, video. Uh, let's go. So the first thing we need to do is we need to create our swell attack. So our swell attack is not there, as you can see. So here we need to come to animation, new, and we're going to create a swell like this. So my swell attack, I need to go back to uh, Sprite 2D, I need to go to my frame right here, and I need to go where I have my attack. So my attack starts at the 17th uh, frame, so I'm going to click here, not create reset track, boom. Uh, and so now I can come here, 18, 19, 20. I have different uh, swell attack, I have this one for example. I have the one that we're going to use for down. I'm not going to create them right now. I'm just going to uh, create this one right here. I'm going to put here the limit at dot four. It's not going to be on loop. But now what also what we need to do is we need to create a collider for our swell. So uh, here I'm going to come to my player, click on plus, and I'm going to take a look at my area, uh, new area 2D. I'm going to call it uh, swell, like this. And uh, that uh, swell uh, area 2D, I'm going to attach a collision shape to it this one right here and that collision shape for uh, making a bit more clear I'm gonna call it sword collider like that it's gonna have it's gonna be a box and I'm gonna change the color I'm gonna put something like this this world I'm gonna the sword area here I'm gonna move it to be around here something like this and I think I'm gonna keep maybe the height I don't know like I think maybe I'm gonna put it a little bit higher like this I think it's gonna be good Boom, boom. So yes, I think this should be globally all right. I'm just going to make sure that my swell is aligning with the, uh, the, the, the transform point of the uh, swell area. So like this, everything works pretty well. That's all right. So here, what we're going to do is like at the beginning, I'm going to come here and I'm going to make sure that it is disabled per default. So like this, we're not going to uh, destroy things uh, when we are not using our swell. And here after that, on those two frames right here, I want to activate it. So here I'm going to activate it. Boop. Come back here. I'm activating it. I need to put also this on, uh, on snap. So like this, it's snapped to my timeline. Boom. And then here I'm deactivating it. Voilà. So now this should work. So... Boom. All right. That works. So right now what we need to do is like because uh, we have created the Sword Collider, it's going to be present in all our, uh, um, all our other animation. For example, I come here. You can't see it like that. But if I go to the debug visible collision shape and I launch the game, you're going to see that the collision shape is always present. Because I'm changing also the local scale, you can see that the collision shape is uh, going in the direction where the, um, the player is, is, uh, is going to, which is the reason why I have uh, chosen that. So right now we are good, but we need to deactivate that. Otherwise, we're going to be a destroying object without looking to. So the best way to do it is in the code. What you can do is like at the top, uh, right here, we don't have a ready function. So here I'm going to call ready like this. And I'm going to say that when the game is starting, I'm going to access that sword collider. So I'm just going to pick it up like this. And I'm going to say uh, disabled equal true like this. Other method is you can uh, make sure that the uh, code, the, code, the uh, collision shape is disabled in every uh, of your animation. You create a track and those kind of things, but that can be a bit cumbersome. So right now, you're going to see right now, like it is disabled and that's perfect. And because we are uh, enabling and disabling the, uh, the collision shape in the animation uh, uh, of this world, uh, then it will not like uh, reanimate, uh, it will not like return on automatically. So that's a good thing. So uh, right now, 
one thing that we need to do is we need to have an input for uh, creating for or using our slot. So for that, we need to go to project, project setting, we go to input map, and here I can uh, turn uh, off a show built-in action. I'm going to create another um, another input, so I'm going to create UI sword or UI attack. Maybe UI sword. UI sword is a good name. Up, and here I want to map uh, a key. So here I'm going to map, for example, X on my keyboard and I also want to map a key on my mouse because I want to use my mouse for, for that so I'm going to click here and I'm going to go to a mouse button and I'm going to use my uh, which one I am using for my mouse which uh, because I also use the jump ah it's the left um, the left mouse that I'm using for the jump so I'm going to come here uh, project setting input map and so for my swirl here what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the right uh, mouse button this one right here like this, I can I can toggle my swap. So now, if you remember, our uh, animation are uh, playing in something that is called set animation. If I go into set animation, I have like I'm I'm checking the uh, the animation regarding to the velocity that I have. Right now, we need to add a new parameter, which is uh, attacking. So here, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna create a new uh, a new export category, I think. So up uh, export underscore category. And I'm gonna call it a swirl variable. In that swirl variable, I'm gonna make uh, an export uh, var that uh, that I'm gonna call is attacking, and it's gonna be of type bool. And per default, I'm gonna set it to be equal to false, like this. So uh, now, if I go back to my player, we have it for debugging if I, if I if I want to. So uh, now I need to go back to my set animation and here all that code I'm going to put it into a sort of indent I'm going to say if is attacking uh, is equal to false then we can do that so I'm going to just take it Another way to do it is like you can do if not is attacking that's also, that also work and you can remove the, um, the false and here I'm going to say if is attacking so here that means if attacking is equal to two, then what I can do is I can say um, dollar sign anim dot play, and here I can call my swirl animation. Perfect. Now we need one last thing uh, to be able to like uh, use the swirl uh, nicely is we need to create a function that we're going to use to reset is attacking. So here I'm going to create that function and I'm going to call it uh, reset underscore state, and here. I'm going to say is attacking is equal to false. Voila. I'm going to save. Go back to my animation player. And in my animation player, I'm going to call that function. So at the end, right here, I'm going to uh, uh, say is attacking is equal to false. I'm going to call that function. So for that, I just need to go to add track. Uh, it's called, called method track. And here I go to player because player is what holds my script. I come here. And then it creates that new track player function. And here I can make a right click inside key and I can look for my reset state and I can click on open. And now it um, creates my reset state right here. So now that we have that, what we need is we just need to turn is attacking uh, to true when we are pressing a key. So here we need to go back to where we're going to put it. I think we're going to put it into a new function, I think. I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, move that from horizontal movement, and I'm gonna call a function that is built in in Godot that is called input. And here I'm gonna say if input dot is action just press, and here we're gonna look for our UI as well, like this. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn is attacking to be equal to true, like this. And so now let's have a look. Now we have our swirl that is uh, attacking nicely and we can use it while in air. We don't have weird behavior like, uh, for example, like I'm moving and I can just like start to, uh, how to say, attack and my player can attack when I stop moving, those kind of things. That was thing that sometimes you can have in Godot. And so now we have something that works perfectly. So that's how you create a swirl attack in, in Godot. And then after that, you can go... Um, a bit more in detail. We're going to do that 
uh, little by little. I'm going to show you how to create different attack, playing different attack when you're pressing several times. This is uh, something that is called input buffer. You need to learn about that. It's something that is very important. And uh, in the next video, we're going to make uh, a pogo attack where we're going to uh, be able to attack something that is under us and we're going to have a bit of momentum when we're going uh, to um, destroy it. Like, for example, enemy or like element in the background. That's what we're going to do. So that's it for me. I hope this video has been helpful for you. If it's the case, but don't hesitate to give a thumbs up and subscribe. You can also uh, take a look at my game Lone Night that you can wishlist on Steam. And me, I want to thank you for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.